Welcome to The Contenders. I'm your host, Peg and Young. Learning is fun, but it can be quite hard sometimes. A student in Wisconsin of the U.S. in high school sued his school, saying that they had ruined his vacation by giving him too much homework. Well, we hope to think, or we like to think, that we promote fun learning here on The Contenders. Let's welcome today's Contenders onto our stage. <laughs> We have the Sundubu team, Katie Behrens and Kasim Tae. So Sundubu is a Korean dish and it's made from soft tofu and hot chili uh, paste sauce. And is it your favorite dish? Yes, it's our favorite Korean food. Really? How often do you have this Korean food? Uh, Every day? Every day. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> at, least, at least once a week. Wow. At least once a week. Well, welcome to our stage. It's great to have Thank you here. You. Sundubu team. <laughs> Going against the Sundubu team, we have the Kor Chi team, uh, Kim Ji Young and Wilson Chong. So tell us how you came up with Kor Chi. Uh, well, it's the name of a local restaurant near where we studied in Australia. And it's uh, basically the culture of our team with Ji Young being Korean and me being half Korean and half Chinese. Ah, all right. So welcome Kor Chi and Sundubu teams. Let's get on with our game. To begin, we will have the multiple choice questions for you. You are given five seconds to answer per question, and you can use chance once. Sundubu, you get to choose first. Q, U, I, or Z? We'll go with Z. Going with question set Z, number one. Of the following, New York is also known as the Big Blank. One orange, two tomato, three apple, four lemon. Three apple. Yes. Going to question two. Which of the following is an inability to fall asleep or may remain asleep long enough? One, anemia. Two, bulimia. Three, insomnia. Four, amnesia. Three, insomnia. Very good. Going to question three. Which of the following actors was not in the recent film Ocean's Twelve? One, George Clooney. Two, Bruce Willis. Three, Chris Walker. Four, Brad Pitt. With two, Bruce Willis. Actually, Bruce Willis was in the, the recent film. Chris Walker is the actor who was not part of that film. Soon do we have 20 points on the board. However, we have much of the quiz ahead. Now, Korchi, it is your chance to choose U, I, or Z. U. Going with question set U, number one. Of the following, which doctor would you see for a toothache? One, pediatrician. Two, dermatologist. Three, dentist. Four, plastic surgeon. Uh, number three, dentist. Going to question two. Of the following, which is a different type of test? One, GRE. Two, TOEFL. Three, IELTS. Four, TEPS. Uh, number one, GRE. Yes. <laughs> and we go to question three. Of the following, what is this which acts as a natural preservative, enabling red wines to age without spoiling? One, appellation. Two, acidity. Three, tannin. Four, grape skins. Uh, number three, tannin. Yes. And with that, you have moved ahead, and we go to question four. Of the following, which is not a member of the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development? One, France. Two, China. Three, Greece. Four, Mexico. If you're not sure, you can use chance. Uh, can we take a chance, please? Surely, we will remove two of the incorrect choices. And now, Kor Chi, your choice. Your answer, please, Kor Chi. Uh, number four, Mexico. 
Actually, there's China, and that is not part of the OECD. You have 30 points on the board. However, you have the lead at the end of this section. We have come to the password category where one partner will help the other partner guess which word we're getting to. We, we will give you 100 seconds to go through a list of 20 words in a pre-chosen category. Sundubu, it is your turn first. And so, Sundubu team, um, your pre-chosen category is hospitals. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go. Okay, this is a person who works, not a doctor, but a... Uh, Nurse. This is what the doctor uses to listen to your heart. Uh, stethoscope. This is where you put babies that are born prematurely into it to keep them warm. Uh, or also for chicken eggs. Incubator. Yes. This is what you wrap when you get a cut. Uh, a bandage. Yes. This is what hangs on the ed edge of the bed and the doctors check it. Uh, a form or clipboard. Um, uh, starts with a C. Uh, pass. This is what you sit in. It has um, a chair. It, <laughs> if you can't walk, uh, and you a wheelchair. Can roll it. This is what measures your temperature. Uh, thermometer. This is what doctors wear when they're going to operate. It's the type of clothes. Uh, ER clothing. Uh, no, there's a name. It starts <laughs> with S. Uh, there's also a, a song by TLC. <laughs> which is a in suit, the title. Uh, pass. <laughs> Um, this is something that goes inside of you. A shot, a needle, like a, in, a like syringe. Like in dentistry, it's a type of dentistry. Uh, a drill. Uh, Pass. This is an abbreviation for the place in the hospital you go to in a crisis. ER. This is what takes you to the hospital. Uh, ambulance. This is what surgeons use to cut into Scalpel. you. This is where you grow bacteria in uh, science class, in experiments. Petri dish. This is what gives you a shot. Syringe. This is where you go when you die. Morgue. Pass. This is what you take. You didn't quite get to finish the list. Oh, I enjoy the TLC hint. <laughs> Scrubs was what we were going for, the clothing that people wear in surgery, perhaps, or ER. Um, Implant is what we have for teeth, as well as other things. Um, and chart is what hangs off the bed. Sundubu, you have 140 points at the end of this. <laughs> and now it is your turn, Kor Chi. <laughs> your category is recent movies. Are you ready? Uh, I hope so. All right, go. Uh, B, where you buy your tickets. B, where you buy your tickets. Uh, pass. Uh, C, uh, it features Jude Law. Uh, recent movie, Four People. Um, Julia Roberts. Uh, pass. Uh, o, uh, pass. Uh, J, Kung Fu movie star, Someone's Kitchen. Uh, pass. Uh, G, uh, Prominent Movie Awards, um, uh, pass. Uh, A, it's um, got Leonardo DiCaprio about airplanes. About what? Airplanes. Um, uh, pass. Pass. Uh, J, uh, Get a Car, Handsome Guy, uh, Sexiest Man Alive. Did you Yep. Yeah. Uh, B, pass. Uh, pass. Uh, I'm walking. S. I am walking in which direction? Side. By yeah. side. Yeah. Uh, pass. Uh, C. Uh, uh, Western movie star. Uh, C. Uh, pass. Uh, A. Uh, it's got Brad Pitt. Ah, uh, no, um, that guy from Daredevil, Colin Farrell. A. Alexander the Great? No, just the first part. Alexander. Yeah. Uh, I, comic, um, red, red dudes.
This proved to be quite a difficult category for your team. Um, you didn't get to the Western star Clint Eastwood, and I think your partner was trying to get sideways. He was walking sideways. And, um, well, uh, we have much of the quiz ahead. Um, Korchi, you have 50 points on the board, but be encouraged since we have a lot left. And Sundubu, you are in the lead with 140 points. And now you are free to begin using the buzzer. Let's welcome Mr. David Huang with the questions. Hey, Eunyoung, how are you today? All right, you're looking very sporty. Thank you very much. I'm feeling very sporty because this is the contender stage. I believe that it is a sport, uh, despite what I've heard from some other people in my life. But anyways, though, I'm happy to be here, and I, and I want to welcome you guys on this stage. Um, don't worry about the points because this is where the big money is made in my section. So uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and introduce the rules. Is that okay? All right, here we go. Uh, this next section is a round of non-multiple choice questions. The first team to buzz in will get the first chance to answer. But if that team gets that question wrong, that chance will be given over to the other team. Now, if neither of you guys can figure it out, we're going to help you out with the help of a spelling hint that comes up on your screen. Uh, there's 15 questions in all. It's 30 points per question and five seconds to answer each one. Okay? Let's have question number one. All right. Question number one is about country. Recently, a young Australian couple was in the news for having named their children after countries they once wanted to visit. The names included Peru, Ireland, China, Rose, and blank Jasmine. What is this South Asian country, the second largest in the world by population? Sundubu. India. Yes. Seventh largest by area. And Korchi, you've got to buzz in quickly to go against Sundubu and make up the points. And let's have question two. All right, question number two is about music. He lost his sight when he was six and learned to read and write music in Braille and play piano and organ. He died of acute... Stevie Korchi. Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Sundubu, it is your chance to answer. He'll finish the question. He died of acute liver disease in 2004, and his final album, Genius Loves Company, was released posthumously. Jamie Foxx was a Golden Globe. Uh, he won a Golden Globe for his role portraying this person. Who is this? Sundubu. Ray Charles. Yes. And moving on to question three. Question number three is about gesture. Blank man struck again. Well, almost. The unidentified man who embarrassed police by sneaking past the U.S. inauguration security four years ago was arrested this time before he had a chance to get another presidential grip during January's inauguration. This is a gesture used as a greeting or farewell and to seal an agreement. Porchi. Handshake. Good to see you on the board, Korchi team, and we move on to the next question. Question number four is about superhero. A New York judge says Stan Lee, creator of this superhero, is entitled to 10% of the profits from movies and toys based on the superheroes he created. This superhero, in particular, possesses the ability to... Korchi. Spider-Man. Yes. And Korchi, what was your favorite superhero growing up? Uh, to be honest, I didn't really like watching superheroes and all that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so what were you into? Uh, I don't know, playing around and <laughs> climbing Actually, trees. Actually, physical activity? Yeah, mm. sure. Were you a physical kind of kid? Um, I think I did a little bit of both. Uh, Superhero-wise, though, I think I'm going to have to go with Wonder Woman. No, I think it was probably Superman. You know? uh, you wanted to say Wonder Woman, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, you know, maybe that's number two, but Superman was definitely number one for me. Okay. And yours? Did you have one? Um, probably X-Men. Really? Mm, the whole group? The whole group. That's not right. you got to pick one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pick just one. Oh. Yeah, don't throw her into a dilemma. She's on the show. <laughs> okay, All right, okay. moving on to our next question. All right, question number five, I believe, right? Yes. Is about society. 
A recent government report said that low-income earners tend to have a higher rate of contracting this illness than those with higher salaries. Also recently, South Korean scientists have developed new software capable of pinpointing specific genes that cause this disease. What is this illness caused by a malignant tumor? Korchi. Cancer. Yes. And Korchi, you are catching up. 140 versus Hundubu's lead of 200 points. We move on to question number six now. All right, question number six uh, is about rewards. The lure of $30 million uh, led to the capture of Saddam Hussein's sons Uday and Kwasai. With the trail of this person gone cold, the U.S. is revving up a new publicity blitz. Korchi. Yes. The bounty is expected to double to 50 million U.S. dollars uh, at the end of this month, February. So, hmm, that's a lot of bounty on a person. Korchi, 170 points. You are moving up. Sundubu, you are still in the lead with 200 points. And let's move on to our next question. Yep. Moving on, question number seven. Uh, it's about body. Okay. The new project, Open Your Eyes, on Korean television has moved viewers by realistically portraying blind people going through a transplant operation of this and has also changed public perception of donating one's this. Sundubu. Cornea? Yes. The transparent membrane that covers the pupil and the iris of the eye. So people donate corneas and help out people who need it. Yeah. Would you be willing to be an organ donor? I am actually. When oh. I got my driver's license, they mm -hmm. asked if I would be a donor. Are you as well? I am not. Any reason why? Um, no reason. I just like my organs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to take it with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Since we increase your lead 230 points to Korchi's 170, it's very close. We move on to our question eight. All right, question number eight is about university. Women may be underrepresented in math and science departments because of the lack of innate abilities in those subjects. The president of this university, Lawrence Summers. Sundubu. Harvard. Yes. Yes, he ended up apologizing for these controversial comments. Um, Korchi, would you agree? Uh, yeah, I guess it's like a blanket statement, so. Really, yeah. you would agree? Yeah. Oh, sorry. You disagree agree that he should be forced to apologize. Ah, you agree that he should apologize. Ah, yeah, sure. Ah, okay. <laughs> Misunderstand, sir. <laughs> yeah, we don't want you to have such a big mistake made on global television and then you'd have to apologize yourself. Uh. <laughs> okay. All right, moving on to question number nine. All right, question number nine. Um, uh, it's about science. Data from the Cassini spacecraft now confirm that Titan is a moon with weather. The mountain ranges of ice are gently eroded by the rainfall of liquid this. This is a gas... Korchi. Methane? Yes, it is the rainfall of methane. It's a byproduct of petroleum refinement and also a product of decomposition decomp of matter in swamps. Korchi, 200 versus Sundubu's 260. Let's move on to question number 10. Okay, a pretty tight game. Uh, question number 10 is about cinema. The challenge is to watch as many movies as possible without sleeping with only 15 minute restroom breaks between every three movies. The winner from this event to be held in Korea will receive tickets to this film festival in France. What is this film festival? Korchi. Cannes Film Festival. Yes. The grand prize there is the Palm Door. Would you be willing to be sleepless and watch movies in a row? Uh, um, maybe. <laughs> the tickets to the Cannes? Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty interesting. We move I think on. a lot of people do that anyway. I mean, <laughs> my brothers, I think, would sign up for free or whatever, even without the tickets uh, for the Keynes Film Festival because they do that all the time, <laughs> actually. But anyways, uh, yes, let's move on. And Korchi, you're catching up. You've only got 30 points between you and the lead. We move on to question 11. Question number 11 is about London. Passengers of this are to be allowed to haggle with drivers when fares are to rise in April. By the new rule, customers will agree to a price before they set off, rather than having to pay the amount on the meter. This is a famous... Sundubu. Taxi? Mm, Korchi, it's your chance to answer. He'll finish the question. This is a famous symbol of London's transportation. What is this? Korchi. Korchi. Um, double-decker bus. Hmm, let's take a look at the hint. 
Korchi. Uh, black cab. Yes. And Korchi and Sungubu, you are now even at 260 points. We move on to the next question. Question number 13. Uh, it is about sleep. You may think that you need sleep for your body, but it's really for your brain. Some ways to get a good night's sleep is to finish eating three hours before bedtime. No alcohol and a glass of this. Sundubu. Warm milk. Yes. The reason why the milk works to help you sleep is because of the calcium, which directly actually relaxes you, works on the nerves. And we move on to question 14 with Sundubu in the lead. Okay, very close. Question number 14 uh, is about luxury. American Express's mysterious Centurion card may become another symbol of luxury. Available only by invitation to selected Platinum Card members, it promises to simplify the lives of the harried rich. It is akin to having a personal concierge always on call. What is the color of this prestigious card? Sundubu. Green. Korchi, five seconds. Korchi. Purple. Let's take a look at the... Hint, Korchi. Black. Yes. We have come to our last question of the section, and you are tied now at 290 points, so everything hangs, or going on to the next round, hangs on this last question. Let's have it. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. <laughs> question number 15 uh, is about citizenship. California Governor Schwarzenegger rejected an appeal by a triple murderer which gave the green light for California's first execution in three years. This has lost him popularity in his homeland and he is on the verge of lo losing citizenship of it as well. What is this country? Sundubu, Austria. Yes. And it's a very close game. But Sundubu, you've come out on top and you get to move on to the finals. Congratulations. Korchi, it was a slow start for both teams, but you got rolling. It was very close. What do you want to say to your supporters? I uh, just want to say thanks for everyone watching out there. And yeah, let's continue to make contenders really successful. Yeah. And? Yeah, I think I was too nervous. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, we had a great fun today, so yeah. Mm. I'm glad you had fun. It was great having you on our show. Thank you for joining us. Definitely. And so, Sundubu, how do you feel to be going against our three-time winners, the Hotok team? Oh, I'm excited. A little bit nervous, but definitely excited. Yeah, same here. Uh, it was really close, so uh, just excited to go on. All right, congratulations for moving on. And we'll be right back after this with the Hotok and Sundubu teams. Welcome back, the Hotok team. <laughs> Patrick Lonneman and Andrew Matson, it's great to see you back here. You are now attempting to go for a fourth win. Mm -hmm. so how are you feeling? Pretty good. Great. Yeah. Enthusiastic? Yeah. Definitely. Uh -huh. All yeah. right. Well, good luck to you today, Hotok. And good luck to you today, Sundubu team. Let's get on with our game. <laughs> In our final session, we'll be giving you five categories of questions, uh, five questions each. They are ranked in difficulty, 10 to 50 points. You don't have to choose them in order. You can choose once you get a question correct. What are today's categories? All right, today's categories are crime wave, physics, your environment, Egypt, and building blocks. And we will begin with crime wave for 10 points. 
quote, forget about making a hundred, forget about the victim, forget about the suspect, and focus on the only thing that can't lie, the evidence, end quote. The lead team of the Las Vegas PD Criminalist Division, led by hard-nosed Captain Jim Brass and quirky Gil Grissom, tracked down perpetrators using scientific analysis and the occasional leap in logic. What is the title of this popular CBS television series in the U.S.? Hota. CSI. Yes, crime scene investigation. Huta, are you a fan? Yeah, it's a good show. Mm -hmm. I like Miami better. Really? Yeah. Why? Dave, David Caruso is funny. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yes, he's pretty charismatic in that yeah, role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Huta, you get to choose. Um, let's go Crime Wave for 40. Crime Wave, 40 points. He led an irregular life and was on the point of being arrested for disseminating atheistic opinions when he was fatally stabbed under mysterious circumstances. Research suggests he was murdered either because he was a spy, didn't pay his bar bill, or because he was called Jesus and his disciples a group of homosexuals. Who was this murdered playwright, the most significant of Shakespeare's predecessors in English drama? What the? Christopher Marlowe? Yes. <laughs> to die because of the bar bill would be the worst death, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. hmm. Sundubu, you have to buzz in quickly to go against the more experienced Hotok team, so I encourage you to do that. Hotok, you get to choose. Uh, crime wave for 50. Crime wave for 50 points. This woman faced her ex execution bravely, refusing the customary offer of a blindfold and blowing a kiss at her killers, pointing 12 rifles at her. Her execution by the French in 1917 may well have been a serious miscarriage of justice. Her career as a spy was short-lived and unproductive, and whether or not she was ever the double agent she was thought to be is highly debatable. Who is this whose name has become synonymous with espionage, intrigue, and sensuality? The famous woman spy. She's about the only woman spy we know of from childhood. She was originally born in the Netherlands and later joined the German Secret Service. Known for being involved with many high-powered men. Five seconds, both teams. Matahari. Uh, and why don't we go with Egypt for 10 points. The current flag of Egypt was adopted in 1984. The first form consisted of a white crescent with three stars on a green background. However, the current red, white, black tricolor structure now bears the symbol of this bird. This is said to be the bird of Saladin, an Ayyubid sultan who ruled Egypt and Syria in the 12th century. These are large birds of prey, and the rulers of Egypt often used it as their seal. Sundubu. Falcon? Hotak, it's your chance to answer. Finish the question. What is this bird? Hotak, five seconds. Hotak. Eagle. Yes, it's the eagle. There are only two species of eagles in North America, the bald eagle and the golden eagle. And Sundubu, it was a good chance, a uh, good try. And Hotak, you get to choose. <clears throat> Physics for 40. Physics, 40 points. The foundation of this theory was laid during the first half of the 20th century by Max Planck, Albert Einstein, and others. This study and analysis of the interactions of atoms and elementary particles is applied to much of the operation of modern technology. Hutta? Quantum mechanics. Yes, quantum. It referred, the word refers to the smallest discrete quantity of a physical property, for example, electromagnetic radiation or angular momentum. And the quantum can also mean sudden, dramatic, and significant. Mm -hmm. And Hutak, you choose. Physics for 50. Physics for 50 points. 
Uh, 2005 is the World Year of Physics and students worldwide are to recreate the experiment of measuring the circumference of the Earth on the largest scale ever attempted. It was this Greek scientist that first measured the circumference of the Earth using only sticks, shadows, Archimedes. Sundubu, it's your chance to answer and he'll finish the question. Using only sticks, shadows, and a bit of mathematics uh, some 2,000 years ago. This Greek scholar is also remembered for his method of, method of finding prime numbers and measuring the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Who is this? Sundubu, five seconds. Sundubu? Euclidean? Let's think of the mathematician with... Hotta. Euripides? Sundubu, five seconds. We are looking for Eratosthenes. Eratosthenes? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Eratosthenes. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, sorry. It was on the tip of your tongue. <laughs> sorry, brother. Yeah. And, well, why don't we go with physics for 10 points? For 10 points, uh, the scientific understanding of this underwent a revolution in the early part of the 20th century with the theory of relativity. In physics, this quantifies or measures the interval between <laughs> events or the duration of events. Time. The? Time. Yes. <laughs> Measured in minutes or hours, it is time. And Hotak, I ask you, please share your answer with us after I've called out your team name. Sorry. Thank you. And you get to choose. Physics for 30, please. Physics, 30 points. For his discovery, this person was awarded the very first Nobel Prize for Physics officially, uh, and I quote, in recognition of the extraordinary services he has rendered by the discovery of the remarkable rays subsequently named after him, end quote. He refused to take out any patents related to his discovery on moral grounds. Who is this physicist that unveiled the X-ray to the world? X-ray. What the? Hawking? Sundubu, five seconds. He is the inventor of the X-ray. Five seconds, both teams. Rentgen, Vil Wilhelm Conrad. Rentgen, and we've talked about him before in relation to x-rays. Why don't we go with building blocks for 10 points. Hello, my name is Chong jae Yong, and I'm an architecture professor at Hongik University. You think art is something special and framed, tucked away in the museums? Well, for some art, that may be true. But architecture is special because it is a form of art in our everyday lives. It is also a witness to history, an emblem of culture, and a repository of social values. Let's take a look at some of these questions, and you'll know what I mean. A new memorial built by Alexandra Hildebrandt is being dil disliked by authorities who find it unhistorical and symbolically inaccurate. The memorial consists of wooden crosses, each commemorating a would-be escapee that was shot or killed near this structure between 1961 and 1989. Before this the Berlin Wall. Yes, before the structure fell. It symbolized the divided state of Eastern and Western Germany and also the Cold War. And Hotok, your choice. Crime wave for 30, please. Crime wave, 30 points. The two countries most affected by the theft of cultural objects are France and Italy. It is difficult to gauge the extent of this crime because it is often not discovered until the stolen objects are found on the official arts market. This painting by Munch is on the Interpol's recent list of the most Hutta. Scream. Yes. It is his depiction of despair with a woman. Screaming, yes, holding her hands to her ears. And Hotak, you get to choose. <coughs> Physics for 20. Physics, closing category, 20 points. In 1932, James Chadwick discovered this. In a way, he prepared the way towards the creation of the atomic bomb. 
Outside the nucleus, this is unstable and has a half-life. What the? Electron. Sundubu, your chance to answer, and he'll finish the question. Outside the nucleus, this is unstable and has a half-life of about 15 minutes, decaying by emitting an electron and anti-neutrino to become a proton. The nucleus of most atoms consists of protons and these. What is this? Sundubu. Neutron. Yes. It is the subatomic particle with no electric charge. And Sundubu, it's good to see you on the board. You get to choose. We'll take your environment for 10. Your environment for 10 points. In Korea, there are new guidelines about the proper disposal of food garbage, requiring citizens to separate food waste in a different way. The main aim of this program is to create adequate animal feed. Which of the following can be categorized as food waste according to this new system? 1. Fish bones. 2. Nutshells. 3. Pineapple peel. 4. Meat fat. Hotta. Four meat fat. So nothing hard that cannot be, you know, ground up to use as fertilizer or as feed. Mm. Can't, it it should probably be, choke on it. Yes, right. right. It wouldn't be good to throw it out with your food waste. And hotta, you get to choose. Crime wave for twenty, please. Crime wave for twenty points. Closing category. Parker and Barrow first met in 1930. They were meant for each other and they clung to each other while they fought back. What the? Bonnie and Clyde? Yes. They actually enjoyed a 21 month crime spree, uh, which spanned four states Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Missouri. They killed 13 people before they were. Sorry. <laughs> killed at a roadblock in 1934. And it's a really good movie, too, by the way. Oh, yeah. Warren Beatty, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Classic. Yeah. And hot dog, you get to choose. Your environment for 50, please. Your environment, 50 points. Some extreme ideologies of radical environmentalism are often cited to justify equipment sabotage and even burning of houses impinging on a natural ecology. The most extreme, sometimes called this. Hot dog. Eco terrorism. Sundubu, it's your chance to answer. I'll finish the question. Claim to view themselves as part of nature, simply acting to protect itself from man. This is a recently coined word referring to environmentalists who engage in actions considered by some to be terrorism, including violent destruction of property. What is this word? Sundubu, five seconds. Eco-terrorists. Sundubu, five seconds. Sundubu? Terrorist. Yeah. <laughs> Helpful hunt, wasn't it? <laughs> and Sundubu, you get to choose. I'll stay with your environment for 40. Your environment for 40 points. Industrialized countries are under pressure to come up with the countermeasures to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide and methane, as this protocol went into effect. Hold on. Kyoto Protocol? Yes, as of February 16th. The U.S., which produces the greatest amount of greenhouse gases, China and India are still refusing to sign the protocol, citing economic interests. So we urge U.S., China, and India to sign on. Which, uh, and... Oh, sorry. <laughs> And this was negotiated in Japan, in Kyoto, in 1997. And what the? Uh, let's go with Egypt for 50. Egypt, 50 points. The Egyptian language's lifespan of some 2,800 years makes it the oldest recorded language known to modern man. However, this language is the last descendant of the Egyptian language. It, sur it survived the Arab conquest of Egypt in the 7th century, but gradually lost ground against Arabic, which has become the official language. What is this language which survives as the, the liturgical language of Egyptian Monophysite Christians? Sutta. Sanskrit. Sundubu, five seconds. Sundubu, five 
Sundu bu. Akkadian. Let's think about the civilizations of that era. We've seen... Hutta. Aramaic. Sundubu, five seconds. No, we're actually looking for Coptic, the language. Coptic. Yes, Coptic. Coptic. Yes. I tried. You did. I yeah. tried. <laughs> ah, why don't we go with building blocks, 20 points. <laughs> Erected by some ancient Michelangelo, it is grander than anything left to us by Greece or Rome, wrote Henry Mouhot, the French explorer who visited this in 1961. By then, the world's largest religious monument had been uninhabited. Hot dog. St. Peter's. Sundubu, your chance to answer and he will finish the question. 400 years. The nearly mile-long temple complex is laid out to reflect the Hindu idea of the universe. What is this Cambodian sacred city whose name means Temple of the Capital? Sundubu, five seconds. Sundubu. Angkor Wat? Yeah. What would you like to have next, Sundubu? Um, building blocks for 30. Building blocks, 30 points. If William the Conqueror, who began erecting this structure in 1066, knew what would happen over the next 900 years, he may have kept up. Hutta. Hadrian's Wall. Sundubu, it's your chance to answer. He'll finish the question. Turn to France. This has variously served as a royal residence, a zoo, a prison, a place of execution for two English queens, the site of the secret murders of one king, one duke, and two princes, and most recently, a magnet for camera-toting tourists. What is this building? Sundubu, five seconds. Sundubu. Um, the Bastille. The chance to answer is open to both King Zhao and Hutto. The Tower of London. Yes. And what would you like to have? Uh, Egypt for 30, please. Egypt, 30 points. By the way, today's kind of funny. You're going, what would you like to have? Hot dog, what would you like to have? Sundubu? Yes, I'll take both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I've been laughing by myself. I had to share that. Okay, Egypt for 30 points? Okay. Born Michael Shalhoub, this Egyptian graduated from Cairo's Victory College with a math and physics major. Uh, he first worked with his father in the lumber business before he stepped into acting. This actor, fluent in English, Ar uh, Arabic, Greek and French, appeared in his first English language film, Lawrence of Arabia, and went on to play Yuri Zhivago in Dr. Zhivago. What is the name of this popular actor of Egyptian origin? He was Yuri Zhivago in Dr. Zhivago. <sighs> what the? Tony Shalhoub? Sundubu, five seconds. He's got a whole line of designer things actually sold in Korea uh, perfume, um, towels, etc. Uh, think back then to the cast of the Lawrence of, of Arabia, but he's most famous, and you would recognize him right away as Dr. Zhivago. Very charismatic, dark, handsome, tall actor. Five seconds, both teams. We're looking for Omar Sharif. Omar Sharif. And why don't we go with your environment for 20 points. It is suggested that there is a cycle to this, and studies suggest that we are currently living in the middle of a man-made event of this in the modern Holocene epoch. The collision of a large asteroid with the Earth or global nuclear warfare are hypothetical scenarios that scientists believe may cause or trigger an event of this level. 
What is this, which refers to the death or ceasing to exist of all members of a species uh, or family of organisms? What the? Extinction. Yes. And Hotta, what's next? Your environment for 30. Your environment. Closing the category, 30 points. The estimated damage from Asia's tsunami disaster to Indonesia's environment is away is much over $600 million. In Asa province alone, the disaster damaged massive areas of forests, mangroves, and bees that are nature's buffer to such disasters and their consequences. This is a marine ridge of organisms that have... What the? Coral reef. They, ha they have an external skeleton, by the way, and there are three types of coral reefs, fringing, barrier, and atoll. And what the? What would you like? Egypt, 40. Egypt for 40 points. One ancient account regarding this city tells how the founder under undertook to lay out the city's general plan, but lacking chalk or other means, resorted to sketching it out with grain. At the time, this was interpreted as an omen that the city would prosper particularly in grain. This was the seat of the Ptolemaic rulers of Egypt and one of the greatest cities of the Hellenistic world, second only to Rome in size and wealth. What the? Alexandria? Yes. Founded by Alexander the Great, hence the name. And which would you like to have? Egypt for 20, please. Egypt, closing the category, 20 points. Up until now, it was thought that Amenhotep II drowned in the Red Sea chasing after the people of Israel which Moses had led out of Egypt. But there is new scientific research to see whether the Egyptian conqueror Ramses II is the same person as the Pharaoh in this book of the Christian Bible. The book of blank recounts the experience of the Hebrew Hutta. Exodus. Yes, departing from Egypt to the promised land of Canaan. And of the two, which would you like to have, Hutta? 40 points, please. All right, building blocks for 40 points. It was an odd choice that Frank Lloyd Wright was asked to build this museum. He famously hated cities, and he hated New York City with special bile. Hutta. Guggenheim. Yes. He rebelled pointedly against the city's uh, right-angled linear grid by designing a circular building, and uh, copper magnate Solomon Guggenheim built it with his money. So it is uh, sh to show off his impressive collection of modern art, and it has his name. And we have just one question left on the board. We have building blocks for 50 points. The World Trade Towers that are no more, the Empire State Building, the Sears Tower, are all buildings that once competed for the world's tallest skyscrapers. This too was recently the world's tallest building until December 31st of last year, when the 509 meter Taipei 101 surpassed the height of this building, which is 452 meters. These are twin towers located in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. What is the name of this structure? The Twin Towers. You're picturing it in your head. You're, you know, the tour guide to Kuala Lumpur. You see them, right? The little ridged buildings going up. What the? Petron. Sundubu, <laughs> <laughs> five seconds. Close. It's at this. Twin Tower name. You were very close, Hot Dog Team. Five seconds. Hot Dog? Petromna. <laughs> Sundubu, five seconds. I don't know. Right. Sundubu? Petrono. Oh, you were so close. It's Petronas. Oh, Patronus oh, Towers, oh, and... I tried again. So we didn't quite get to Patronus to end our game. However, Hotok, you've won four games in a row. Congratulations.
Various prizes are awaiting our winning contenders. Your first win will take you on a trip to Jeju Island. Your second win to Japan. Your third win will take you to China. And on your fourth win, you'll win a trip to Southeast Asia. On your fifth win, a trip to Hawaii. Your sixth win, a trip to the United States. And on your seventh win, you'll take the grand prize of a tour of Europe. We hope many of you join us. Sundubu, it was a tough game for you. It's especially <laughs> tough to go against previous winners. So I know you have supporters, though. I, what do you want to say? Uh, thanks to everyone who supported us, especially our students and host families. It was great to be on, and it was fun while it lasted. Well, thank you very much for joining us. It was fun. And Hutak team, uh, you've got four wins. Are you ready to quit? We're going to Europe. <laughs> no, uh, we, we will keep playing, though, yes. All right, all right. Yes. Hutak team, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Put <laughs> that team now has four wins, and we will be seeing them again next week. Join us then. Bye bye. <laughs>